Hey everybody, this will be part two of a character animation demonstration in Unity uh, for a 2D pixel based animation. So the last video we talked about creating the pixel art uh, animation sprite sheet and this video we're going to talk about how to integrate that into Unity. So we have already uh, saved our PNG into our sprites folder and we're going to come make our adjustments to the sprite sheet and then start integrating this into Unity. So the first thing we're going to do is come into our sprite sheet. In the inspector, I'm going to change the sprite mode to multiple. And I'm going to change my pixels per unit to 32. That was the pixel size of my individual square for each character. And I'm also going to change the filter mode to point, no filter. And this will create a crisper line, especially for things like character motion. It's going to work better. Filter mode to point, no filter. And we're going to click Sprite Editor, which will ask us to apply. So in the Sprite Editor, we want to slice this up according to our 32 pixel squares. So let's go to Slice. We're going to change the type to Grid by Cell Size and change our pixel size to 32 by 32. And then we will choose Slice. There we go. So now we have our squares set up. I can come in here and I can rename each one of these. Uh, that could be helpful if I need to reference this in other ways, but for character animation, I actually don't need to, uh, to rename these. I just need to know the order. And the order is the first two are gonna be my idle, the second seven are gonna be my jump, and the last two, four, six, eight, ten are gonna be my run. So I just need to know that order, or I can name these so that I make sure I know what order I have here. All right, so let's close this out. It's gonna ask me to save this again. All right, so now I'm ready to start using this. If I open up the arrow for that character sprite sheet, here are my individual frames. It's gonna slice it up according to those squares. So this is another way that we can edit and create uh, visual graphics by just opening up after we have sliced our sprite sheet and dragging in one of our particular characters. So I already have a player character, which is this white box. If I hit play, all of my actions are already on this if I wanted to set this up. Uh, I can just adjust this one, but what I'm going to do instead is just recreate this and reset up the character from scratch with the same settings that I have here. In case I want to use this as reference and potentially not mess this up, this is a way that around that. So I'm going to create a new 2D object sprite and we're going to use a square. And I'm going to rename this one Player AnM this time just so, because my other one is called player, player and M. All right, in the inspector, I want to change my sprite that it's trying to find to that character. So I'm going to type in character, and I'm going to say character sprite sheet zero. There we go. Make sure that one is selected. I'm going to reset my transform. So I'm going to hit the three dot button beside transform and choose reset. And then I change my sorting layer to player. Uh, my other character was set up. And let's just drag this down a little bit. So there is my character set up in there. So let's see. Everything else should be good here. I am going to increase my scale because I want it to be a little larger. So let's do scale to 2x, 2 for y, 2 for z. So it's twice as tall. And that will be now 2 pixels high instead of 1 pixel high. Okay, so that'll work well how I want this to work and run. I need to add uh, my rigid body and my collision. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say rigid body 2D. Uh, to match my player settings from before, I'm going to change my linear drag to 3 and my gravity scale to 3. And then I want to open up my constraints and turn on freeze rotation Z. So that way my character can't fall over or rotate sideways. So that's my adjustments for rigid body. I'm going to do add component and add a box collider. I'll come back and maybe do a more complex collider later. But since this character is animating, I just want to do a box collider for it. So there's my box collider. And I might actually even on the X change this to 0.8. So it's a little bit shorter width wise. I'll have to go back as the animation is playing and see if the arms get cut off or not. Um, but for overall, the box collider should work pretty well. I could even tile this down at 0.6. So it's much closer to the character, 0.5 maybe. 
There you go. Because uh, the arms really aren't going to be a big problem. I just really want from the head to, to collide with the head. I can even scale this down in the Y as well, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Okay. And then maybe I'll do a little bit of an offset here. 0.1, negative 0.01. There you go, negative 0.0. 2015. There you go. That looks pretty good. So it's pretty tight and close to the character. Now we'll have to see once we get to that, but we can change the box collider offset and size, and that should correct all of that. We also need to go into our scripts and add our um, movement scripts in here. I'm going to make sure I have my player movement platformer and go to my player anim and drag my player movement platformer script onto my player and M character. Let's go ahead and add some speed. I think we did. Let's go back up to the player to check. 10 for speed, 20 for jump velocity. So let's go back to our player and M. 10 for speed, 20 for jump velocity. And to connect with the top of the platforms that we've done in a previous video, I'm going to change my platforms layer mask to platforms. And if you missed that part um, in a previous video, you can go back and watch my previous video on uh, being able to jump properly on top of a platform or not. All right, one other thing we need to do before we set up the animation is go back to our camera and swap out the box or square player so the camera will follow our new character NM. So with our camera selected, I'm going to drag my player NM into my camera controller script so the camera will follow the new player and not the box anymore. I'm going to take the box player and turn off active so it won't play. And then now if I hit play, this character should work the same way as my previous box did. You can jump, you can move around, move that platform out of the way, I can collide with something, you can pick up things. So that'll work the same way we've done before. Now we want to add our animation to this. So that way when the player walks or moves, it'll start animating and perform the walk or run animation. When it jumps, it performs the jump animation. And also add the idle as we're starting here. There you go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is create our animation controller. And we need a couple windows to be able to do this. So if I select the player and M character, I'm going to go up to Window, Animation, and I'm going to open up the animation and the animator. So let's go up to animation. It opens up a floating tab. And if I go to window again, animation, animator. And that opens up the animator window as a sub tab of the scene and game. I'm going to drag the animation tab so it's at the bottom here. So there you go. So it temporarily attaches it there. We need the animation window separate from the project window. All right. So with our player anim selected, I'm going to click on the create button to begin animating player anim, create an animator and an animation clip. So have the player anim selected, I'm going to click create. And in my sprites folder, I'm going to create a subfolder and we will call this one animation. So select that folder. Now what I'm actually saving a file for is an animation clip. So we're going to start our first animation clip. We're going to call this one idle anim, which is going to be the idle kind of bobbing up and down motion when the player is not pressing any buttons. So let's save in that folder. There you go. All right, so in the animation tab here is our idle anim. And I know my first two frames here are my idle animation, basically a bobbing up and down. So I'm going to drag select these two into my animation window with idle and M selected. So let's drag select that or drag that in there. Let's go back to our scene and let's zoom in a little bit and watch it. So if I hit the play button in the animation tab, it is going really, really fast. It's bobbing up and down really fast. It's just too fast. So I'm going to change the samples. And if you don't see the samples, if you go to the three dot button beside the animation tab, there's a show sample rate. We have to turn that on in order to edit it. So sample rate is how fast it is playing back that motion. If I dial this down to a lower value, let's say, let's try 15. 
and hit enter and then hit play. Now it's going to bob slower. Now that's still pretty fast. So I'm actually going to reduce that even more. Let's do six and play. There you go. That's more of how I want the timing to be there. So lower frame, lower lower sample rate means it's a slower motion. Higher sample rate means it's a faster motion. That looks pretty good for our idle. Let's pause. I'm going to create a couple of other animation clips for my jump and my run. So let's go ahead and do the run. We'll do a create new clip. Add the same folder. We're going to call this one run and m. There we go. So my run animation starts right here and goes all the way to the end. There you go. So those are all of my run frames. I'm going to drag those run frames in here. And if I hit play, that's really fast. Could be how I want it to be, but not, not that much. Uh, let's, try, let's try 12. Play. So that's a little slow, so maybe we'll do 15. That's pretty good there. So I like 15. So you can change this to uh, however fast you might want that to be. We'll do 15. You can always change this later as well. So there's my run. That's a run animation. And we need to create two more, one for a jump up and one for a jump down. So I'm going to create a new animation clip. And we're going to solve this, title this one, Jump Up and M. And I have some frames. Uh, this third one to the highest jump part. That's my jump up. And I'm going to drag that into jump up. And I want something much lower. Let's do 10 for this. And play. There we go. So he jumps up in the air. Now the vertical movement of the character is going to be determined by uh, our script that we've already associated with the uh, rigid body velocity. But this is just a motion uh, of the frames changing. And then we need a jump down animation. So create new clip, jump down anim. There we go. And uh, I'm going to start with this fourth one and work my way to the end there. So this one also has four frames. I could also not copy this last frame, but I'm going to keep it copied in there. And drag that in. And let's try, let's try six. There we go. So that floats a little bit more. That looks pretty good. So those are my four animations. Idle, run, jump up, and jump down. Okay, so back in my sprites folder, I need to make a couple other adjustments. My idle and my run, I want to loop, but my jump up and jump down, I don't want to loop. So basically when I'm not pressing any buttons, I want the idle to loop in its animation. And when I'm holding down a run button, I want it to loop that run animation. But when I'm jumping in the air, I don't want it to loop my jump individual action. I don't want it to loop jumping up, and I don't want it to loop jumping down. So with an animation clip selected in that animation folder, here's my idle animation, I want to make sure loop time is checked for idle, and loop time is checked, that's default, for run. But my jump up, I want to uncheck loop, and for jump down, I want to uncheck loop time. So that's going to be a firing one-off command, one-off animation, and then my idles are going to be a looping animation. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is use the animator uh, tab. So the animations where we add our frames in, and the animator is uh, really our state machine, uh, where we are going to transition in and out of these different states. So if I look at this, uh, if I select my player and M, I have any state, entry, and then exit. Now I'm really going to be just using entry, because once I get into idle, I then want to transition into my other states. So I'm going to separate this into kind of like a diamond shape. Can I see everything here? Zoom out a little bit. So I have idle at the top, and when I start playing uh, entry, I wanted to play my idle and loop my idle. And then I want to give options to go in and out of a run animation and then go in and out of a jump up and down animation. So here's where we got to think about kind of how this is going to transition with each one of our actions. So I want to be able to transition from idle to jump up and then also idle to anim or run and then also idle to jump down. 
Um, I also want to transition if I'm running back to idle, if I'm running back to jump up if I want to jump. Um, and then also when I jump up, I want to transition to jump down. And when I jump down, I want to transition to run and I want to transition back to idle. So there's a lot of transitions we're going to create here and it's all basic motion of how we want to transition the different actions back and forth together. So let's set those up. So we're going to right click on idle animation and do make transition. That creates a wire, uh, arrow wire frame, wire line. And I want to click and drag to run. So that gives me the option to transition from idle to run. All right, so with that transition, there are a couple options that I need to do here. And uh, well, let's create all the transitions, then we'll come back and adjust them. So I'm going to go to run animation again. I'm going to right click, and I want to be able to transition back into idle. So let's do make transition, transition that back into idle. So now let's go idle animation and transition into jump. Make a transition, click on jump up. I don't need a transition from jump up back to idle, but I do need a transition from jump up, make transition to jump down. And then I want to transition from jump down to run. Okay. And then I also need a transition from jump down back to idle. And then if my character is jumping at a higher standpoint and kind of floating in the air or falling, then I also need to transition back to jump down. And the final one that we need is a run animation transition back to jump up. They give the ability to jump while running. So if I click on run animation, make transition, link that to jump up. All right, so those are all the transitions that we need. Now we need to be able to set conditions that we can then reference in our script. So this is the state machine. And now we need variables, uh, true or false Boolean variable, that is a condition that tells the script if my player can jump, then jump, or if my player can run uh, during these different animation states. So let's take these one at a time. We have an arrow that points from idle to run, and this is the transition, first transition we created. And we need a variable that determines if the character is running or not, or can run. So with that transition selected, I'm going to come over here to parameters in the animator. And we'll click on the plus symbol, and we're going to add a Boolean variable, which is a true false. And I'm going to title this one is running, and enter. That's a Boolean variable, is running. Basically, check or not. I have it not turned on as default. And with this transition from idle to run, in the condition, I'm going to click the plus symbol. And we're going to say is running. If is running is true, then allow it to run. Then we can transition into run state. A couple of the adjustments we want to make here, uh, where the settings are. Above that it says has exit time. I'm going to uncheck that. I don't want to have an exit time here. And I want to turn off transition duration which is a blending in between those two uh, animation clips. So let's do zero for transition duration and uh, has exit time unchecked. All right, so let's click on the transition from run back to idle. And we're going to add a condition again. And we're going to do is running and is running is false this time. So if I'm done running, transition back into idle. Let's uncheck has exit time from this one and transition duration to zero. Okay. All right, so the next we want to adjust is the idle to jump transition. So I'm going to select that one. And we need a new variable this time. We now need an is jumping variable. So back in our parameters, we're going to hit the plus symbol. We'll do a new Boolean. And we're going to say is, oh, spell it correctly, is jump. Jumping is jumping. Is jumping variable. Alright, so with this transition between idle to jump up, we're going to add a condition, change that to is jumping. And if the idle to jump transition is 
If the condition is set to true, then we want to jump. So is jumping true? All right, we're going to turn off the has exit time transition duration to zero. All right, we're going to select on transition between jump up to jump down. This one down here. And we're going to add a condition. Uh, actually, we need a new one here. So we need a new Boolean. And we're going to call this one is falling. Make sure you know how this is spelled. We're going to reference that in our script. Is falling. All right, is falling. So we need to change our condition between the jump up to jump down transition to is falling. And if the character's already jumped, then we need to determine that the character can fall down, so we're going to transition into jump down. So is falling is true. Okay, we're going to uncheck has exit time, change transition duration to zero. Okay, might be a good time to save, so we'll just save our project. Let's make sure we're not losing any work. All right, we're going to select the transition between jump down and run NM. And we're going to add a condition. And we're going to say is falling false. So as in if our jump animation is done, then transition into run animation. So is falling false. And we're going to uncheck has time or has exit time, transition duration back to zero. All right, let's go to the middle one, run animation back to jump up. Let's add a condition. And this one's going to be is jumping, and that one's going to be true. So if running, if spacebar is pressed while running, then allow it to jump. Is jumping true? Turn off has exit time, transition du duration to zero. All right, so we have two left. We have the idle to jump down and jump down to idle. So idle to jump down, select that one, and we're going to add a condition to this. And we're going to say is falling true. So if, if I'm floating in the air and I'm falling down, then play the jump down animation. We're going to turn off has exit time, transition duration to zero. Let's go back to the last one, jump down transition to idle, so the arrow pointing up. And we're going to add our condition, and we're going to say is falling, and we're going to say false. So if the falling is done, the jump animation is done, then go back to idle animation. Turn off has exit time, transition duration to zero. All right, so let's make sure we have a condition for each one of these. Just click in each one of these, which we do. And that's the setup. So that's the Unity setup. We have our animation clips. We have our animator state machine. We have our booleans that we're going to reference in our script. And we have our player character set up so that it can accept the incoming adjustments that we're going to make. Now we need to go into our script and add our lines of code so that way we can play the animations uh, when the player is pressing WASD or spacebar to move and jump. All right, so we're going to open up our script. I'm using Visual Studio Code. And here's our script. This is from the previous videos of how we've set this up so far. So I want to add uh, a couple of things and then reference them. We need to have a reference to the player character's uh, animator. There it is down there. Player characters animator. I need to reference this animator component. So to do that I'm going to add a private variable. It doesn't need to be public, this can be private. So I'm going to return down underneath my other private variables, private, and this is going to be called capital A animator, that's the component. And then what am I going to call it locally to reference it? And I'm just going to type in lo lowercase animator semicolon. Okay, private animator which is referencing the component. Lowercase animator is going to be my local reference variable name. Alright, in void start I also need to start the setup to connect it to that component. 
So in void start and return down, and we'll reference our local variable animator. Animator equals get component, angle bracket, and then capital animator, close angle bracket, uh, space, and then we'll open and close parentheses and semicolon. Same thing of how we reference our rigid body up here as well. All right, so really the same setup we did for rigid body. All right, so here's where we're going to add uh, the movement adjustment. And then we're going to talk about adding the jump uh, animation as well. So in our fix update is where we added our character movement. In our void update is where we added our jump. So we just need to make sure we add uh, our running motion to our fixed update where our movement is and our jump motion to where our void update is, uh, where our jump action is. So I'm going to return down underneath fixed update or within fixed update and we need to have a couple of if statements here. Uh, these, this first if else statement is going to say if the player is moving left or right then play running animation. So let's do if and we're going to reference our move horizontal float we had earlier. If move horizontal equals equals zero as means if there's no moving then do not play running animation. So if our player is not pressing any buttons don't play any animation. Play as in play the idle animation. So let's return down. We'll open up and close our curly brackets and I'm going to reference the animator which is my animator component animator dot set bool and here's where we're referencing those custom uh, boolean values true or false is running is jumping is falling so I need to know how this is spelled properly animator set bool and we'll open up parentheses open up quotations is running I need to spell it exactly how I spelled it in unity and then close Quotation, I'm going to do a comma, and we'll say false. Close parentheses, semicolon. So basically, if the player is not pressing a button to move with the move horizontal, then play idle, do not play running. Uh, and we want to say else, return down, else, which means if there is movement horizontal, player interaction, else, we're going to open up and close the curly bracket, and we're going to say animator, dot set bool open quotation or open parentheses open quotation is running close quotation comma and this is now going to be true close parentheses semicolon all right so let's save and let's go into unity let it compile let's see if we got any errors There we go. Let's just make sure we save our Unity project as well in case it crashes. So no errors. So let's go play. All right. So if I play, if I move left or right, my character runs. When I let go, it goes back to idle. So if I can run and let go, run and let go, and it goes back and forth through my idle. I'm not pressing any buttons now, so it's idle. When I hit A or D to run, it runs and then stops and goes back to idle. Now, as you can see, there's a visual issue here. If I hit D to go right, it runs in the right direction. But if I hit A to go left, it looks like I'm moonwalking or walking backwards. So my character is always going to face in that direction right now. So the second set of if and else statements is going to flip the sprite uh, so that if I hit A to move left, it'll run towards the left way. If I move, if I hit D to move right, it'll run to move or animate towards the right. So that's one thing we want to correct for. We don't have to go back and create a second animation sprite sheet. We just need to make an adjustment in our script here. So the first if else statement is saying if the player is moving left or right with A and D, then uh, set the bool is running to true, which will fire and play the run animation and loop that if that button still held down. The last part here we're going to return down and add another if and else if statement is uh, if 
if we're moving to the right, uh, then keep the motion uh, in this regular standpoint. If we're moving towards the left, then flip, literally rotate the sprite 180 degrees. So we're going to say if move horizontal is less than zero, okay, less than zero, open and close our curly bracket, then we're going to use what's called a Euler angle for the transform. So we want to do transform dot Euler angles. So basically this is the rotational angle of that sprite and we're going to flip it 180 degrees. It's called a Euler angle. Transform dot Euler, E-U-L-E-R, angles equals, we're going to do a new vector because we're dealing with uh, Euler angles. There are three different rotational angles, X, Y, and Z. So new vector three. And then we're going to do open parentheses. Zero, zero, zero is the setup. We'll put a semicolon at the end. But we actually want to rotate this 180 degrees in the Y axis, which is the middle one. Transform dot Euler angles equals new vector three. Open and close parentheses, and then we have 0, comma, 180, comma, 0. So basically, if my movement is less than 0, which means I'm moving left, then flip, literally rotate my sprite 180 degrees so it's looking in the opposite direction. We're going to do return down and do else if, and then we'll open parentheses, move horizontal is greater than zero, close parentheses, open and close curly bracket, then we will repeat that, transform.euler angles equals new vector three, and then here's the default, zero, 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 and close parentheses, semicolon. So if my character is moving towards the right, then do not flip it or flip it back to zero. So we need both of them because if I start moving towards the left and it flips at 180 degrees, if I start moving towards the right, I want to flip it back towards the right. So we need to rotate it 180 degrees in the opposite direction. Okay, so that's kind of a left or right motion there. Let's save, go back into Unity, make sure we don't have any errors. Okay, and let's try that, let's go play. All right, so if I um, move towards the right, I animate and look towards the right. If I look towards the left, I animate and look towards the left. And even the idle is switched at that point as well until I move towards the right again. So now I have kind of full character walking, running motion left and right. What I don't have is jump. So if I jump, uh, just the idle will play when I jump. So I need to set up my if conditions for that as well. Go back in our script. So that's it for fixed update. Our void update is where we have our jump command. So we need to make a couple adjustments in our if statement to see if the player is grounded and the space key is pressed. Right underneath the line of add velocity to the jump, we're going to add animator dot set bool, similar to what we did earlier open parentheses, open quotation, we're going to do is jumping, jumping, close quotation, comma, true, in parentheses, semicolon. All right, so that'll basically say if I can jump, then play jump animation. All right, so the last couple are looking at how fast the vertical velocity motion is. So underneath that if statement, I'm going to return down a couple times. And I need to check to see if my character is still in air and can jump, or if my character is not in air, I'll allow it to jump. So these are secondary if statements that look at the rigid body. So I'm going to do if, in parentheses, rb1, that's my rigid body velocity, same thing up here, rb1 velocity dot y 
that's the vertical axis, equals equals to zero. Then I'm going to turn down, let's open and close our curly brackets. Then I want to do animator dot set bool, open parentheses, open quotations, is jumping, close quotation, comma, false. So I don't want the player to be able to jump if I don't have any vertical motion at all. Uh, is it on top of the, the arc? All right, so semicolon at the end. And I also need to say uh, is falling. So to say to do the down motion. So we're going to say animator dot set bool open parentheses open quotations is falling close quotation comma false. Close parentheses, semicolon. All right, we're going to do another one. So I'm going to return down after that if statement. I'm going to do a last one. If, open parentheses, rigid body RB1 dot velocity dot Y is less than zero. So as in there's negative motion or there's start of falling motion. Return down, open, and close our curly brackets. We're going to do animator set bool is jumping, close quotation, comma, and false. So I don't want to have the option to jump again or play the jump animation again. Close parentheses and semicolon. But I do want to fire the uh, jump down motion which is my is falling. So animator dot set bool open parentheses open quotation is falling close quotation comma true close parentheses semicolon. So uh, that's our setup which will allow us to be able to jump play jumping animation if we're jumping if there's no vertical height, then we're not going to allow it to jump and not allow it to. Um, then we're not going to play back the jumping animation. We're not going to play back the jumping down animation or jumping up. And then if there is negative Y motion, uh, that means the character's falling down, then we're going to play the jump down motion or is falling. All right, let's save. Go back into Unity, let it compile, let's see if we got any errors. All right, we don't, and let's play. All right, so you can see as I was falling, it went ahead and did the fall, so I can have my run back and forth. If I jump, it plays my jump animation. If I go on top of some of these platforms, you can see kind of a uh, delay. It's gonna delay that jump some, there you go. Go. So that works pretty well. Everything works how I want it to. So I can have jump, I can have movement left to right, I can jump while looking this way, jump while looking this way, and everything does work how I want it to. So that's the basis for character motion. You can come back in, you can change uh, the speed of the player, the jump height of the player within the animation or the play movement script that we've already created. So we can change the speed, jump velocity to match kind of how you want the player to move around in your world. But that wraps up this video talking about how to integrate character animation sprite sheets into Unity uh, with the animator and the state machine and a custom script.